You want me to get closer because of the audio or no? You think it's okay? It should be fine. All right. <clears throat> if this was UF, maybe a little different. <laughs> nah. So, Mr. Rickon, what are your thoughts on geese? <laughs> I hate varmints. <laughs> I hate them. They're, they're cluttering up the neighborhoods and they get in the way. They drive me crazy and they make me stop in the road. And then they pluck up your yard. I don't understand why they don't go home anymore. Go home, geese. Go they're, away. They're everywhere on campus, too. I always they? watch out for a turd whenever I'm walking. I bet. I bet. Yeah. Where are you from, Alex? I am from Jacksonville. I'm from the Mandarin area. Did you go to Mandarin High? I went there my first year, and then I transferred to Atlanta Coast for oh. my last three years. Okay, cool. So what made you decide to anchor sports in Jacksonville specifically? Uh, job. I mean, I, I came out of Florida 31 years ago. And um, I basically didn't have a job. I was graduating. I drove around the state, went up to South Georgia, sent tapes out. Back then, we didn't do it on computers. We had to send out, mail out resume tapes. And um, one guy in Jacksonville said, you can, uh, you can intern here. We can't pay you, but you can intern. And I said, oh, that's cool. And I didn't have anything else to do. And I had a lot of friends, so I could live here you know, inexpensively. So that's why I did it. And I never left. So it's a good location? <laughs> yeah, it's the best. Love it. And uh, you started reporting in 1989 or 1990? No, I even I started in 80, uh, 1986. 86? Yeah. All right. Before so, you were born. Definitely before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it like to report sports in Jacksonville before the Jaguars were in the NFL? It and was all. Different? It was okay. I mean, it was because it was such a college football town. So we did all kinds of Gators and Noel stuff, and um, but we didn't have a professional sports team. But um, we were so heavily involved. Spurrier came in 90, and Bowden was there. So it was like Florida, Florida State all the time. So, you know, people here love football. So we do spring football big and high school football and college football. We just didn't do much with the NFL. So there's always football around, just not specifically yeah. NFL. Yeah. And uh, which sports personalities are you fascinated with and why? Uh, well, growing up I had my, you know, sports heroes that I, that I loved and, you know, that I looked up to. And those guys were, you know, like um, this guy Tom Seaver, pitch for the Mets Hall of Famer. He was my favorite. And uh, Joe Namath, I guess like he had, you know, the pizzazz and stuff, but he always got hurt, so it was unfortunate. Um, there's a guy who played for the Knicks named Walt Frazier. Called him Clyde. He was cool. um, used to have his sneakers when I was a kid. So this is so so long ago that nobody watching this will even remember, except anybody my age. Those were the guys that I, you know, were my sports heroes, if you will. And uh, who are the most interesting athletes you have interviewed, and why? Golly. Uh, that's a good question. You know, I've been fortunate and gotten to interview a lot of great athletes. I'll tell you one I interviewed very early in my career that, that blew me away was um, Henry Aaron. And oh, really? I was I was like uh, just starting and I probably had only done like one or two live shots. And I, and I, and I, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry about my voice. <laughs> Killing it. No, no. I had Hank Aaron um, scheduled to do live with me. So I was very nervous. And um, it was really cool to uh, spend time with him. You know, he, had, he wasn't playing anymore, but that was neat to be around him. And I'll tell you my best blow off ever. I was at spring training one year with the uh, Kansas City Royals and I wanted to get something with Bo Jackson. And so I went up to him and I mean, he, I'm a little kid, I'd go up there with a little mic and everything. <laughs> hey Bo, can we talk to you? He just had his arms around, I always remember his arms around the back. <clears throat> and he was like, excuse me. And he just kept walking right by. <laughs> so that was my best blow off, I think. Have you seen the, the 30 for 30 documentary? Yeah, it's that's good. It's a good Very one. Very good. And um, have you tried other fields of journalism besides sports? And No. No, just no. specifically sports? Yeah, I did. I, I got into it because of sports. I didn't want to do news. Um, if I didn't do this, I would have done something else in sports. Um, I always, for whatever reason, I don't know why, I've loved sports. So, 
if I was going to do TV, I was going to do it sports-wise. My dad always told me to do news. He said because news guys last longer. You know, you see the real old news guys. Sports guys, once they get to about my age, we're like, uh, you know. So, um, but I, I just love sports. I love everything about them. I love the competition. I love the drama. I love the stories. So, it was sports for me or nothing. Sports or nothing? Mm-hmm. And what are the challenges of reporting sports in Jacksonville? Uh, well, it's more the challenges of the business. The business is always changing. You know, I always tease Stuart because you kids, young guys, you grow up with all these computers and stuff. Exactly. And you know how to work everything. And people like me, we got to learn it step by step and practice it and do it over and over again. So, like when you come to a mistake or what I call a roadblock, um, you figure it out. I come to a roadblock, I go, Stuart, help me. You know, yeah, I got to get help from somebody. I don't know what to do. So it's a little bit different. Those are the challenges. Um, it's a great job. Um, the, the hours aren't great, but we all knew that going in. Because when do they play sports? On the weekends, on holidays. So, I mean, we get that part. And if you don't want to, you know, as you get older, you get a family and, you know, they have to deal with it as well. And sometimes you'll miss a few things with your family, which is kind of unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. You know, it's a trade-off, so. Exactly, so it's something you know going in. Mm -hmm. And uh, one last question, what do you think are the prospects of the Jaguars for the rest of the season? <laughs> <laughs> if you had asked me last week, it would have been, it would have been pretty good. Um, the game against New England was an abomination. It was so disappointing. So they're one and two. Um, I'm hoping they can win six or seven games. I really think that Blake Bortles has got to step up and get better. He started 16 games now, so it's time for him to not be a rookie anymore, to start being a, a good young quarterback and to make the plays. And in the NFL, they say not for long. Um, if you don't get it done, they'll move you out quick. You know, you don't get four or five years as a young quarterback anymore. You get two. Look at E.J. Manuel. He didn't get anything. He's already finished as a starter in the league. So you got to make it happen when you get your opportunity. And hopefully, I think Blake can do it. Um, hopefully he will over the next few weeks. I think he's got the potential. Yeah. There's just got to be something wrong with, uh, with the defense when you allow 50 that points. Good, that one good. They had not – we never saw the punter. I don't even know who the punter is for New England. Do you? I don't. Yeah. Do you? No, we never saw him. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's unfathomable that that can happen in an NFL game. They could not stop him, and that was uh, so disheartening and unacceptable. I think to the to everyone, the organization, the fan base. I mean, you know, at some point, it's a results-oriented business, and if you don't get the results, they try somebody else. I see. Thank you for your time today, Mr. Higgins. Sure, anytime, Alex. Thank you. Not a problem. Sorry about the voice. No, no, you're fine. It's can, Stewart's fault. I was screaming at the Gators the other day. We can dub it in under afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and then I interviewed Bo Jackson. If you think this was bad, tune in at 6. I think that's in a half hour. We'll put a lot of sound in there. I've got some recola in there for you if you need them. Attaboy.